How's it going everyone? So in today's episode of Tuesday Tools, I'm gonna to be looking at the Noodle script for Adobe After Effects. This is a new tool that allows users to quickly and easily add dynamic movement to shape paths. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be using it to bring movement to the beams of this Sun cartoon character. Now I've been calling this guy Sunny McBeams, but if you have a better idea for a name for this character, please leave that in the comment section and I'm gonna pick my favorite name and give that person a free copy of the Deep Glow plugin. A quick heads up, Noodle only works in Adobe After Effects 2019 and later versions, as well as only in English versions. And if you'd like to purchase this tool or just learn more about it, please follow my affiliate link, which is in the video description. Okay, I'm inside of my Adobe After Effects project here. I already have my Sunny McBeam's character head and face, and I'm gonna press the U key and you can see I've applied a very basic animation. It's doing a little rotation in a scale animation. So now what I wanna do is I wanna go through and create these beam paths and then attach them to this head and see how the noodle effect um, will create those secondary animations without using any keyframes. So I have my initial keyframes, but from here on out, there won't be any keyframes in creating these, um, these secondary animations. So I'm gonna close this. Now I wanna create my beams. And to do that, I need to create a shape layer. So I'm gonna go to layer, new shape layer. Now shape layers can be very wonky. You wanna make sure you do everything in the right um, steps. Otherwise you can cost yourself um, or cause yourself a lot of extra work. I'm gonna rename this beams and I'm gonna apply, um, I'm gonna put all the path elements under the one shape layer. And the reason I wanna do that is because the noodle is ap applied as an effect. So I wanna make all the adjustments. Anytime I adjust that noodle, I want it to be uh, change all of my beam paths, which I'm gonna create eight. So if I did these each path on, on individual layers, then I'd have to adjust each individual noodle effect. So it doesn't make much sense, that kind of workflow. Now, what I wanna do here is I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm gonna quickly turn off the fill. I'm gonna set it to none. I'm gonna turn on the stroke to a solid color. I'm gonna sample the color of Sunny McBeams here with the color picker. And then I'm gonna set the width to 25. And actually, you know what? Once again, you need to be careful with shape layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this stroke off. I'm gonna set it to none. And so I'm gonna go through and quickly um, add eight different paths and then we'll apply one stroke at the end so then when I make adjustments to that one stroke element um, it will apply to all those eight paths because right now if I drew all these strokes there's going to be all individual stroke elements so you, you got to make sure you, you do it the right way otherwise you're going to cause yourself like 10 times the amount of work so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create paths that are radiating out from the center so each path will have three vertices um, so let me just create the first one to show you. So I'm going to create one in the center here. First, I'm going to turn on guides. I have a vertical and a horizontal guide. I'm going to add one vertices in the center um, or near the center. So I'm going to select it right here. And then I'm going to add a second vertices right at the edge. And I'm going to click and drag to actually create, um, this is going to create a smooth path in that center. And then the third vertices is going to be out in the end here. And now I'm gonna hold control and just click so that I don't continue creating a path. It's gonna, so now when I use the pen tool again, it's create, gonna create an entirely new open path. So I don't want those paths to connect. Now the reason I did that, again, so now when I connect the path to the head, it will basically um, kind of bend around that middle vertices, which is right at the edge. Um, so you can kind of do this how you want. But uh, for this animation, this is the specific method I want. You could just attach it to the end in different ways. So now I'm gonna quickly go through and create seven other paths. All right, I've created the eight paths and I'm gonna go down here, open up this shape layer and the contents. And now you can see eight shape paths. So. Again, the reason I did this is I just created the basic paths with no stroke, no fill. So now I can go and I can just hit the add menu. In the add menu, hit stroke and make sure that this is at the bottom. Now this stroke is gonna be applied to all of these paths simultaneously as compared to diving in and uh, manually editing each individual stroke, which would just be maddening. Or just going in there and having to turn off all the strokes. Okay, so I'm gonna change the color here color picker straight on Sunny McBeam's face. I'm gonna bump up the stroke width to 25. 
And then down under here, there's a new taper feature. In the latest version of Adobe After Effects, they introduced tapered uh, shape strokes. I made a tutorial on that, standalone tutorial, which I'll link to in the video description if you want to see learn how to use those. They're really cool. All I'm going to do here is adjust the end length. So let's set the end length of these to like 50, and now that will automatically adjust to all of those. Okay, so I'm going to close this now and close the contents. I'm going to grab uh, the beams layer and bring it underneath the sun, and now turn off the guides, and I have my beams now. Okay, and again, I'm going to show you the repeater method, which is faster, but um, the noodle reacts to it differently. So I'm going to show you the difference there. So now I have Sonny McBeams with his beams. Now I'm going to apply the noodle effect. So once you have the noodle script installed, to open it up, go to Window and select Noodle. And here you can see the panel, really basic interface. That's what I like about it, these basic um, really user-friendly interfaces. It's essentially three buttons here. We have the Noodleize button, we have the Enable Disable button, and we have the Show Noodle Zone. And then over here we have Settings. So all I need to do is grab my Shape Layer, which has all of my paths, and select Noodleize. Now it's telling me um, that you're sharing the noodle effect on eight different paths. Um, so yeah, I want to control all of those with the one individual noodle. Now this is going to add a noodle effect to my layer. Oh, and I forgot, to connect my beams to the sun, I'm going to parent the beams layer to the sun layer. Now before I adjust any of the parameters, let's take a look at the default animation that noodle applied here. All right, if I go back and I turn off the noodle effect, we can see a before and after. So it is adding a lot of movement here, but Subjectively, I think, in my opinion, this is just much too bouncy and springy, so let's see what we can do here. The noodle effect is being applied to the noodle zone, so with my layer selected, I'm going to hit noodle zone, and it's going to show me actually eight different zones because I have it applied to eight different paths here. So essentially, this is a being applied to the anchor point, and it's radiating out from the anchor point. Now, if I have noodle zone parameters over here. There's a start and end and a shift noodle zone by and then pixel amount. So the documentation explains this pretty well. Think of it like the anchor point is gonna be where the chopstick would be holding your noodle. And as you move out from that in the noodle zone, your noodle is naturally gonna react differently. It's gonna move differently and more freely. So my noodle zones are perfectly fine. I'm gonna turn this off and close this. Now I wanna make some adjustments here to the movement, and there are three main parameters to make major adjustments, including weight, springiness, and air friction. So I'm just gonna bump up the weight a little bit, and I'm gonna leave springiness as it is, and we'll also bump up the air friction to maybe 50%. Now let's have a look. All right, so that's already looking a lot better. Now if I really wanna get down and fine tune it, I'm gonna open up the characteristics here, and I have a few other things. I have overcook, which essentially, the more you increase this, the more fluid and streamy your uh, noodles will look, your noodle paths. And if you lower this, they're gonna be more solid and rigid. I could randomize those with these two uh, random attributes here, random seed and random weight per point. And I also have my favorite attribute or parameter, which is posterized time. So this is essentially, applying a stop motion look. So you're changing the frame rate. Now my comp is set to 24 frames per second. So if I just go and I set this to 50%, that's gonna bring my frame rate down by half to 12 frames per second. So let's have a look here. And I actually really, really love this look because 12 frames per second makes it look much more hand-drawn, hand-animated because a lot of those animations are done between eight to maybe 15 frames per second. I don't know, I'm not a professional animator but uh, definitely makes it look more um, hand-drawn. Now, I know I've been using keyframes on my sun layer here in this example, so I'm gonna quickly show you how we can do this with a zero keyframe workflow. So I'm gonna grab that sun layer, I've removed all the keyframes, and I'm going to open up position and rotation, and now I'm just gonna add wiggle expressions here via alt-clicking, and then typing in wiggle, and on position, I'm gonna do 470, and on rotation, I'm gonna add another wiggle effect, and let's do 415. And now let's take a look at this keyframeless animation. 
So one other thing I wanted to show you, if I turn off these beams, I can go the repeater route, but watch what happens. I'm gonna go grab this, and now I can turn on the stroke to solid color, uh, 25, and once again, turn on my guides. And now I'm gonna quickly create just the one initial path. This is gonna give me a more symmetrical look by using a repeater, however, it is um, gonna give me some issues. So I'm gonna rename this layer beams with repeater. And I'll dive down into the stroke and adjust the taper once again, really quickly. Set this to 50%. And add a repeater. And again, set this to eight. So I want eight copies. Um, now if you think of a circle 360 degrees, um, you wanna find a number that's divisible by 360. So I picked eight, and that's gonna allow me to go down to my rotation of my repeater, and you simply divide 360 by your number of copies. But first I wanna zero out these copies, so I'm gonna go to position, right click and hit reset, and now I can adjust my rotation by 360 degrees divided by eight copies, which is gonna be 45. And that should be a lesson to you, all you kids. If you wanna get good in After Effects, um, just learn a little bit of math, pay attention in your math class, and it's gonna take you a long way, trust me. Okay, so now I have a much more symmetrical looking um, Sunny McBeams, and it's gonna work well with this noodle effect, but let me show you something. I'm gonna grab this, let's noodleize this, forgot again, I've got to parent this. Okay, that's looking a lot more symmetrical and they're actually all reacting in exactly the same way. However, there's something specific going on here in the fact that with a repeater, you only have one path, so only that one path is being affected. So it works with the rotation effect on a perfect ellipse, but watch what happens if I open up my sun animation and I just turn off all of these animations. And let's grab position and say we just want it to fly in like this. Now watch how uh, the animation reacts here. Notice that they're all reacting in the same way and that's because the, the one path is being repeated. Now if I just simply turn these beams off and turn my other beams on and we watch our animation. You can see that now each path is kind of reacting as it should. One other kind of peculiar thing about this plugin I found, and it's in the documentation as well, is that when you begin to make adjustments to the transformation properties of subgroups or groups within a shape element, it can really throw off things. So you need to reset those transformation options and make sure that your noodle zone and your anchor points are positioned um, where they're supposed to be, otherwise your paths are gonna act kind of um, bizarrely. I'm not a professional animator, I don't work a lot with uh, the shape path elements. However, I did take some uh, vector files that were professionally made and had some more detailed paths and I brought those in and I tried to use this noodle plugin with those and it was so hard I found that, um, that it almost seems like it's um, a really great tool if you're creating your own little shapes, but if you're using them on more complex shapes, it might be a little bit more difficult to find a good use for it. But that's just me. Nevertheless, it's a really cool tool that allows you to quickly add the secondary animations without applying any keyframes, and you can make little tweaks and adjustments very quickly. But I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section. Do you think this is a cool plugin? Would you um, use this in your particular workflow? Also, do you have a better name for my character, Sunny McBeams? If you have a better name, um, let me know in the comment section. I'm gonna pick my favorite. That person's gonna win a free copy of the Deep Glow Premium Plugin from Any Scripts and Plugin Everything. It's a $50 plugin. And as always, if you like that tutorial, hit that thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell.